Hi everyone, Riley from InMusic here. Today's video is all about M-Audio interfaces and how to troubleshoot distortion, noise, clicks and pops, and other unwanted sound on both Mac and PC so your audio sounds clear, rich, and free of pesky blemishes. In this video, I'll be using my M-Audio interface, the M-Track Duo, but everything we'll be covering applies to both the M-Audio M-Track and Air Series interfaces. I'm also using MPC Beats as my DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation, but again, everything you'll learn today will be applicable regardless of which software you're using. So if you're trying to find the source of noise or distortion in your sound, double check that all of the software in your recording setup is up to date and running the latest versions. This includes your DAW and, on Windows computers, your interface's driver. If you're using a Mac, your M-Audio interface is already class compliant with Mac OS and doesn't require a driver, you can just plug and play. On a PC, an out-of-date driver can cause audio issues, so make sure it's updated. Head over to mAudio.com, and under Support, click Drivers and Updates. Under Series, click USB Audio and MIDI Interfaces, then select your product in the next box. Under OS, pick whichever operating system is installed on your computer. If you're not sure which version of Windows you're running, open the Start menu and click Settings, About. As you can see, my computer is running 64-bit Windows 10. So I'll just select that in the dialog and click Show Results. Now you can view the latest released version of your product's driver. M-Audio releases driver updates every now and then, so if your driver was installed previously before experiencing noise or distortion, this could be the culprit. The driver I have installed on this computer is actually out of date, so I'm going to click on the link under File, then scroll down and click Download Now. Once your download finishes, open the exe file and follow the prompts in the setup wizard to get the latest driver version installed. You won't need to uninstall any previous version before installing the new one, but you will need to restart your computer once it finishes installing. Now let's learn how to adjust your interface's settings to fix any playback or recording issues. Navigate to the area in your DAW where your audio interface was first assigned as the input and output device for your software or project. This is usually in the Preferences, Settings, or Audio Device Setup menu in most software, and it's the same place you'll find settings like Sample Rate and Buffer Size, or Latency Adjustment. Two notes for Windows users here. Make sure your audio device type is set to ASIO so you can reap the benefits of your driver. You can also launch your driver's control panel from here. Buffer Size refers to the amount of time allotted for your computer to process incoming and outgoing audio signals. An appropriate buffer setting depends entirely on your computer's processing power and how much it may be doing at any time, both inside and outside of your audio software. So you may find yourself adjusting this from time to time, and that's totally normal. Buffer size is directly related to latency, which is the measurement of time it takes for your system to process audio and then send it out to the interface and your speakers or headphones. A low buffer size will make your system process audio more quickly with lower latency. While your device's latency will be lightning fast, this requires more system processing power and at times can provide opportunities for errors in your recordings. Conversely, a high buffer size will increase latency, but allows for your computer to process audio more safely and reduce potential errors. Your computer's processing power is affected by everything it's running, including your current project and its number of plugins and tracks, and any other programs you have open. Since it depends on so many factors, there's no one buffer size that will work in every situation, but somewhere between 256 and 512 samples is a good starting point. If you're experiencing unwanted noise at these settings, increase the buffer size a little and check your sound again. If changing it by even a small amount fixes the issue, then your problem is likely stemming from a lack of available processing power. You can continue to raise the buffer size as needed, but we'll cover a few more things later in this video that may be worth a try. Keep in mind that a lower buffer size is better for recording, since it reduces latency and makes it easier to monitor playback in real time, but you can feel free to bump it up higher when mixing your project. This will provide more processing power for plugins, tracks, automation, and more. When the buffer size is set to a higher setting, the sound you hear may be a bit delayed from what you see playing on screen, but your audio signal will sound better and your system will run smoother. Now let's shift to sample rate, which controls how many times a sound is sampled per second. Think of these samples as snapshots of the sound at any particular point in time. 
just like how a video is made up of individual frames, digital audio is made up of individual samples. A higher sample rate yields recordings that are more nuanced and of higher fidelity, but also increases file size and requires more processing power. For reference, the standard sample rate for consumer audio is 44.1 kHz. 44.1 and 48 kHz settings are common sample rates that provide both excellent sound quality and can be handled by virtually any system. After that, 96 kHz is the next highest setting, which is generally used for recording genres like classical music or anything that requires more sensitivity to dynamic range. If your computer has at least 16 GB of RAM and a fast processor, it should be able to handle this setting. Just keep in mind that since the sample rate is now double the previous setting, you'll need twice the amount of hardware space to store your files. Selecting the sample rate that works best for you will take some trial and error, but luckily, many DAWs have built-in system monitoring tools to help you decide if a higher sample rate is worth the additional strain on your system. Check out the links in the description to find out how to do this in Pro Tools, Ableton, FL Studio, and more popular DAWs. Speaking of monitoring your system, both Mac and Windows also come with tools that allow you to view all your computer's current processes, available CPU and RAM, and much more. Using these can tell you whether your recording noise is being caused by your computer itself. I've also put links in the description for more in-depth explanations on using these system tools, but let's check them out quickly. On Windows, Task Manager is the most well-known system monitor. You can find it in the Windows System folder in your Start menu. If you find that any of these graphs are approaching 100%, go to the Processes tab and try closing some programs you're not using at the moment. Web browsers, video streaming apps, and photo and video editors can eat up a lot of processing power that you'll want to make available for your DAW. The Mac equivalent to Task Manager is called Activity Monitor. A handy trick I like to use is going to View, Dock Icon, Show CPU Usage. This setting displays your CPU percentage as a meter on the Activity Monitor's Dock Icon, which is super convenient for checking your CPU usage while working in your DAW. If the meter approaches the top while recording or playing back audio from your software, this is a telltale sign that you're running out of processing space. If you've already turned up your buffer size, try also closing other software that may be running in the background, or removing some CPU-intensive plugins like reverbs and delays from your project. On Windows computers, another possible cause of lagging or glitchy audio is DPC latency. DPC stands for Deferred Procedure Call, and it's how Windows assigns priority to processes and drivers that run at the same time in a system. To check your DPC latency, open your web browser and go to resplendence.com downloads. Scroll down to find the download link for the free home edition of LatencyMon, which is the tool you'll need to monitor your DPC latency. Click the download link, and once the download finishes, run and complete the installer. I recommend creating a desktop shortcut so you can more easily access it. Now, once you open LatencyMon, click the play button, then play audio from any application through your audio interface for a few minutes. The software will tell you if your system is running just fine, or if it's having difficulty handling real-time audio. A high DPC latency most commonly occurs due to out-of-date or incompatible hardware drivers, which the software will call out. In this case, the next step is to take note of the drivers cited in LatencyMon and search for updates. A good place to start is checking for full system updates. Open the Windows menu and open Settings, and search for Check for Updates. Download any software updates that are pending for your system. If that doesn't solve the problem, in the Settings menu, Navigate to Device Manager. This is where you can view every sound device, graphics card, Bluetooth adapter, storage reader, and network and Wi-Fi adapter in use in your system. One by one, try disabling any of these components and run the DPC test again for each. Side note, disabling your graphics card is not recommended unless you have an additional onboard graphics system. A system restart might also be required for disabling some of these elements. Finally, there's a possibility that you're not hearing any unwanted noise in your recordings. Rather, it could be coming from your sound output. If you're hearing distortion while playing audio back, here are some things you can do to fix it. Check the output levels from your software and computer. 
if either of them are at or near 100%, try reducing it by 10 or 20% to give your signal additional headroom. If your software output is clipping, try using a compressor or limiter instead of simply turning the volume down. Compressors and limiters will reduce the level of peaks in your signal. Most DAWs include compressor plugins, so using one on your main output can prevent these peaks from causing distortion in your output. In the end, the overarching theme here is to send a clear signal of sufficient volume into your interface, one that isn't low enough to be barely audible, but also isn't high enough to begin clipping. Like I mentioned, it may take some trial and error to find the hardware and software settings that work best for your recording setup, but the tools and processes we've covered today will help make it easy to customize your interface's parameters and diagnose potential sound issues. If you ever have trouble getting any sound at all from your interface's inputs or outputs, I made a video specifically on that topic. The link can be found in the description. There, I've also included more resources, walkthroughs, and customer support for your M-Audio interface. Definitely check these links out for tips that are more specific to your own hardware and software. As always, thanks a ton for watching, and have fun recording!